Grace and peace be to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our meditation this Pentecost day is based on the public debut of Jesus' disciples preaching and living out in the open the good news of Christ crucified and risen from the dead. To that end, as sermon text, I offer Jesus parting commission, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So far the text, let us pray. O Spirit of God, bless thy word that we may trust in thee. Amen. Some months ago, my daughter was asked by school friends whether her father's dream vacation wouldn't be a trip to go tour the Holy Land. Being a pastor, wouldn't I want to go sightsee Israel and take in with my own eyes all the great biblical landmarks. Jesus' tomb, as empty as the day he left it. The very patch of ground and spot in the sky where Jesus ascended into heaven. Ellie's response? Not my dad. He'd never go see that stuff. He'd much rather wander around and meet people in some big city or strange foreign market. She knows her father well. Yes, for a small fee, not only can you go see the spot Jesus ascended into heaven, only a quarter mile away, you can also see the other spot it supposedly happened. You can go see Jesus' tomb, which was rediscovered in the 4th century when a Roman royal by the name of Helena, the story goes, was directed by angelic visions to go dig around in the dirt until she unearthed the original cross of Jesus. She then had her son, the Roman emperor, order troops to excavate the entire area until they dug up Jesus' original too. So all current political turmoil aside, a trip to Israel doesn't have so much appeal to me. It's understandable, though, the stereotype of a pastor's trip of a lifetime, especially when you consider how much Jesus' first disciples were inclined to remain stuck and cling to this or that place Jesus had been. Crack of dawn Easter morning, when women returned to the tomb bearing spices to anoint a corpse, angels blatantly point out just why there was nothing to see. Why seek ye the living among the dead? Peter and John go do the same, when they hear Jesus is gone, immediately race to the place Jesus had been, captivated by the handkerchief which had covered his head, doing their best to read into the neat folds of the cloth as if that could unlock the mystery. And not unlike St. Helena would three centuries later Mary Magdalene heads back out there to scour around in the dirt for some souvenir, at which point Jesus himself rebukes Mary. Touch me not. Don't cling to these things, but go tell my brother. All culminating Easter evening, when gathered back together in the upper room, as if Recre recreating familiar memories with one another might soothe their confusion and conscience, Jesus appears to call them out of hiding 
by announcing he has somewhere else, anywhere else, he needs them to be. As my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. It should be no surprise then when at the ascension they cling to the last spot they see him in the sky and why the angels return to rebuke once more. Why stand ye gazing up into heaven? Forward and onward you have work to do. So no, a Holy Land tour is not on my bucket list. Not only because who knows if any of the spots are the real ones, but even the real ones, the consistent message from angels and Jesus alike was move on, move out into the rest of the world. That fact, though, doesn't stop me, nor any of you from getting stuck all sorts of other places. As you find yourself trying to recreate moments from the past which can only fall short of the magic you remember, stare at empty spots on the wall alone in your mind reading into this or that fold of what's transpired, whatever it really means. Replaying tense conversations word for word in the imaginary hope that this time you'll come out the winner of the argument. Whenever certain what someone has been up to and you go digging up dirt to prove your case, in the moment, these are quaint little spots to hide away from life. But like any good tourist trap, they end up costing far more than you thought. As being so stuck in the past is the cause of many a failure to launch and inability to move forward in life. Thus the angels rebuke, why seek ye the living among the dead, is it so rhetorical after all? We sinners seek the living among the dead in all these ways and more, because being dead in sins and trespasses ourselves, it's about the best we can do. But what we learn from the miracle of Pentecost is the power of the Holy Ghost to wake you up and out of hiding away among the stuff and things of the dead, out into the light of day in Christ Jesus, to walk out in the open among those living a new life in him, all accomplished in your heart through the preaching of the cross. Wait a second, back to the cross? Dig that sad story back up like Helena did out of the dirt? Yes, the old rugged cross would be more of our seeking the living among the dead if it weren't for the fact that on that cross we preach was the Son of God whose blood alone transforms his suffering and his loss into your eternal gain. Jesus, who suffered our own reluctance to let go and move on by being dragged himself out of the dark by torches and staves, forced out into the open to carry his own cross, nailed and lifted up, for every tourist who passed by to taunt, who'd pay to see this? Ah, for this great and glorious sight, you need not pay a thing. Though you could if you wanted to. The Olive Grove, we're pretty sure the location of. Caiaphas's house, now a mini cathedral. 
and a temple, not one stone left upon another. But there is no recreating the bitter tour the Son of God took in your place by paying the price of his own life. Also, he could call you out of a life of mere sightseeing onto a journey filled with discovery of the Spirit of God at work. Now, Jesus' disciples at times, they were the classic tourist type. At the Mount of Transfiguration, Peter suggests they set up a tent. Who wouldn't want to see this for, say, a small entrance fee? And their final week in Jerusalem, the disciples barely hear a word of what Jesus says is coming, thinking they were there to take in all the sights the big city had to offer. Thus, the consistent message from Easter to Ascension, why stay stuck staring at the past? Moving them forward by forcing them into the crowded downtown in order to gather lost sheep into the fold. As Jesus says, tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Which meant wandering through the bustling temple markets so foreign to God's intent for his house. Just up until there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and having caught in everyone's attention with tongues of flame they began to preach dead souls awake unto eternal life a preaching that day which might at first seem to be digging up old sins until peter declares those sins no more buried in the tomb Jesus left empty. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made the same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. And again, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, God has raised from the dead. In this proclamation of Jesus' victory over sin, death, and hell, absolving them of their misdeeds, not just 50 days prior, but their whole lives through, that they too might move on and go forward renewed in him. As his sermon concludes, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, for the promises unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Now notice the call and promise to all that are afar off. It might have begun Pentecost Day under the shadow of that grand landmark, Jerusalem's temple, but when these thousands of new believers are persecuted and scattered and the temple itself burned to the ground, the gospel proclaimed on Pentecost would be on the move with them. Just as Jesus said, when ye shall receive power and the Holy Ghost is come upon you, ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, Samaria, unto the uttermost part of the earth. The Spirit of God sets you on the move, too. Yes, the disciples' ability out of nowhere to speak in foreign languages is a miracle but that those disciples so drawn to mere sightseeing that they move forward to speak and live their faith out in the open 
is just as miraculous a working of the Spirit of God. The Pentecost miracle, which still happens today. Some mornings that might be the effort it takes just to get out of bed and face another day. To embrace your workplace as your primary call to engage with others and live your faith out in the open. Which in our day and age means venturing into some remarkably strange markets of those who seem to speak a language very foreign to the way you were raised. In all these public spheres of life and more, having the boldness to speak to those making mistakes no different in, in essence to those you have, that through the good news of Jesus' death and resurrection, they can move on too. For if the shame which Jesus suffered was wiped clean when God raised him from the dead, then any shameful thing you have suffered, he could be Lord in Christ over that, no less. This is what happens every time you come visit this historic landmark, standing in Hecla a good six decades now plus, where, yes, we dig up sins, not to dwell on the past, but to declare them in the past. And thus you, no mere sightseer, now that the gospel has set you on a journey with an eternal future as active participant in the kingdom of God. Now don't get me wrong, history is important. No doubt one of the many pitfalls of the wicked generation in which we live is an increasing ignorance of where we have come from. Go to Israel if you'd like, wherever interests you, and enjoy but with no finer tour of the Holy Land than the Bible itself. The real adventure which lies ahead for you is living each day through faith in Christ Jesus, discovering as you go everything the gospel can make happen in your life and in the lives of those you love. Now the peace that passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen.